Hey guys, it's Kelly and I am so excited to bring you a 2021 Kia Sorento tour. I'm doing the SX trim level and this one has an MSRP of $39,000. Now the Kia Sorento has been completely redesigned and it's kind of fallen into a new category. Um, it's going to start competing with cars like the Toyota Highlander and the Honda Pilot. The Telluride is a lot bigger, about 7 inches bigger actually, and it has a much more roomy third row and then trunk space. But this offers a nice alternative for people who don't need a car quite as big as the Telluride but are still looking for a, a vehicle that can carry their family. I'm pretty excited to see the back seat in the third row. I have not even sat in it yet, so you're gonna get my live reaction on here. And make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm actually going to go on Kia's website and build my own Kia Sorento and take you through the different trim levels and talk about which one I think is worth the most bang for your buck. X trim level and it has an MSRP of $39,000. The Kia, the Kia Sorento will be starting closer to 29 though. So this one has some good bells and whistles. I really like the front end grille with this honeycomb look style. And I like that they chose to in incorporate so many high gloss black elements instead of chrome. It really gives it a sporty look. The new body style is awesome. It's very athletic and it goes nicely with the Telluride without being a complete copy of it. It definitely has its own look, but it has that Kia DNA, which I really like. It looks very fresh, very sporty, and it really catches your eye on the road. These new headlights are great because LED headlights are standard. LED headlights do two things for you guys. One, they make your car look awesome, and they give you a lot better visibility at night. And again, I really just like Kia's continuation of this high gloss black all around the car. It makes it look very uniform. We've got a high black gloss here around the door frames and then it really goes into this nice metallic gray color okay so taking a look at the back end it's honestly not my favorite i mean there's definitely some things i like about it but overall i think the tail lights are pretty basic it's got some really aggressive angles on it that give it like a very masculine look so if that's what you're after maybe it's the car for you but to me it's an aggressive angle here aggressive here comes in on the side it's just all very sharp i also don't love the sorrento badging right here just feel like if you're not a Range Rover, like you don't need to spell it out for me, like you're a Sorento. I love this car, I'd probably drive this car, but I don't know if I need all of that badging. Okay, also I am gonna give some props to Kia, and once I say this, you're never gonna look at the back of the car the same again, but if you notice, there is no back wiper on here because it's hidden up here. That really cleans up the back end a lot, so I do enjoy that. Okay, so you actually open the, I was like playing around here for a while, and then I realized you actually open the trunk all the way down there. That's interesting. And let's take a look at the trunk space. This is kind of a tight car to have a third row. So we have a very tight trunk. Um, that is, of course, if you need to utilize a third row. If not, our trunk space gets a lot bigger. The seats are really easy to put down. It's just a little pull and then push forward. Then I have a very nice sized trunk. And I also have, what else do we have? Oh, a little cubby space down there. So let's, I don't think my stroller's gonna fit, but let's find out. I mean, no, in no world. In no world is my stroller going to fit here. Even if I were to pop off these wheels, I still have, I don't even have the seat yet. So that is going to be a no on the stroller. Um, I will go ahead and put these seats down so you can see what my stroller looks like. Oh, I can do it one handed. That's good for us mamas. Okay, so here's a shot of my stroller frame in here with this row down. So again, then you do have a really nice trunk size. Here's a shot of me in the driver's seat, kind of just playing around with how everything works. The headrests are very bulky and they are kind of at just like a little bit of an annoying angle and they're not adjustable. So you can move them up and down, but you can't control the tilt and they're just, so, they're just a little big. So I'm not loving that, but I do like this interior design. It is beautiful. I mean, we just did a BMW tour and this material, I mean, this car feels almost just as luxurious. The elements in here are gorgeous. They've done a lot of nice contrast stitching. They've put in some really interesting chrome elements with some nice detailing. The air vents are just like totally new and different. I've never seen anything like them. And they kind of kept that high gloss black that was on the outside and they nicely worked it into the interior as well. It also comes with Apple CarPlay wireless, which is very exciting because a lot of the other cars you actually have to plug your phone in. So the fact that this could be wireless is huge for me. This specific one comes with a wireless charger, heated seats, all of the bells and whistles as far as safety features are concerned. I mean, it's pretty fully loaded. Okay, so I'm really liking the interior. I mean, no shade to Kia, but I feel like I'm not in a Kia. I think if you dropped me in this car, I would think I was in a luxury vehicle. The technology 
is awesome, but the design elements are just really unique. Like I'm loving this stamped metal. I think these air vents are just about the cutest dang things I've ever seen. It really tells you what to do. Airflow, no airflow. They have some little mini air vents down here. And then just the fit and finishes are nice. Like I love how this is my heated seats. It's just a cute like little toggle instead of just like a big plastic button. I also like just like the purple in there. I think that's kind of a unique thing. And the display does go into the dash. It's not totally integrated like it has been in some of the other cars I've looked at, but it's still kind of nice. It's a little small of a screen. Um, it's an eight inch display, so it's a little tiny, but I don't totally mind it. The cup holders are pretty good. I was kind of nervous because they look squared. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I hate squared cup holders, but I brought my car mom cup and they fit really nicely. We've got a little change collector, a little, um, I guess another change collector. And then the center council is here. So it's got one of these things you can take out and it's got a pretty good size center council. It could be a little bit wider, but it's pretty deep. Here's my iPhone 11. So it's about the width of my iPhone 11, but it's got some nice height to it. So for the size of the vehicle, I'm pretty impressed with that center council. The side cubbies are very shallow though. Like I'm talking not, you couldn't put anything, you couldn't put any drinks in there hardly. So that's not great. Um, comes with a wireless charger. It has three USBs up here, which is crazy. It's got quiet mode. This is great for children. So what quiet mode does is if you turn it on, it will actually turn down the sound system in the second two rows and just have it up here. So it says when quiet mode is selected, radio and media is played only to the front seats. All volume levels above seven will be de decreased to seven automatically. So that is super awesome for us mamas. Also something called sounds of nature. So you can just turn on an open air cafe and I guess dr drive to that. Could do warm fireplace. Okay, this would, this is dangerous. This would put me to sleep if I was driving. Now I have to go to the restroom. Why do I love that so much? Voice memos are stored in this vehicle. Ooh, spooky. Our navigation. So again, I do think that the screen is a little small, but overall, I mean, look how nice that is. Like you go to your home screen and it's just like the time and the temperature. Because I'm a guest, you can always set up your own profile. Yeah, I'm having way more fun in the Kia Sorento than I thought I would. Um, beautiful size mirror. Lame light, but I like the mirror. I hate when the lights aren't in the visor. That just is a little thing for me. Let's look at the uh, panoramic sunroof. I mean, there is nothing better to me than a panoramic sunroof. I think it lets in so much natural light and makes a small car feel a little bit bigger. Okay guys, here's a shot of me in the second row. I had set this driver's seat for myself at six feet tall and I have honestly a lot of nice room. This seat is um, can slide forward and backward to allow either more room to this person or the person in the third row. As far as my amenities back here are concerned, they are pretty amazing actually. I've got a cup holder right here which is making me so excited. Um, I think that's much better than them being on the ground or in, like, in the um, middle part of the bench seat. So if you have this cup holder, I even brought a pretty decent sized cup because I was worried about it and it fits perfectly. So that is darling and I love that. We also have another cubby right here. It's pretty shallow, um, can't fit my cup, but it is still there. And my amenities back here are also pretty good. I've got some vents right here. They're not on the ceiling, so that's a little tough for rear facing kids, but I still have some vents. And then I've got one USB here and then I've got two USBs on the sides of the seats as well. So that's awesome. It also, on both sides of these seats, they have these cute little nets, which is like the perfect little thing to hold your phone. Cool. Okay, let me climb into the third row. So, to access the third row, there's a little button right here. And it's also down here. So I really like this because if you have younger kids who need to access the third row, sometimes they can't always reach that. So with this button being down here, it folds it in, pushes it forward, and then I am going to hop into the third row. Okay, so here's a shot of me in the third row. Let me pull this thing back. Okay, so it's not back as far as it can go, but wait, this is actually not so bad. Okay, hold on now. Let me get buckled. There's only two seats back here in the uh, tell you right there's three, but I'm actually liking that there's only two because it gives everyone a little bit more room. I can't believe the high clearance I have. It's actually indented if you can see that, but at six feet tall, 
Okay, I'm kind of hitting it a little bit, but overall it's pretty comfortable. I've got a cup holder back here. I don't have any vents on this level. I have vents on the floor though, so at least that's something. Okay, I could actually ride back here. I'm impressed. There's also um, USBs on either side as well. So really your third row has pretty good amenities. Guys, this is awesome. I'm super impressed. I thought I was going to have knees to my chest. And as you can see, I don't. I do want to point out this aisle is very narrow. Maybe like a skinny seven-year-old could get past it, but an average size adult is going to have a really hard time. Like it's the size of my thigh. <laughs> so to get out of the third row, there's, you, there's just this button right here. You could just hit that and push it forward. So that does make it very difficult to get out of the third row if you were to have car seats in both these seats. Really then your only option would be to either be skinny enough to go through here or enter through the trunk. So that is something to consider. Okay, let's talk about the car seat situation. Color me impressed, Kia, because it is actually pretty good. So I've driven the old Sorento before and I always had a hard time with the car seats. I felt like it was just a little bit too small for rear facing car seats, but I have my Graco extended fit and I put it forward facing obviously plenty of room you could even have like a seven-year-old or skinny child kind of finagle their way through here and then enter the third row that way and then i have my other baby mesa on the other side and i actually have a pretty good amount of room and i had set both these seats for myself at six feet tall as far as the the hardware is concerned in the captain's chairs we have sets of lower anchors in each with tether anchors on the back and there's two sets of lower anchors in the third row with tether anchors as well. So that's a total of four sets of lower anchors and four sets of tether anchors. That's awesome. Okay guys, so let's talk about the Kia, the 2021 Kia Sorento and the different trim levels. Um, if you go to the Kia website and build your own, it's a really nice way to break down the different trim levels so you can see the different equipment that's on all the cars. So let's go look at the trim levels. The LX starts at 29 and the SX Prestige goes all the way up to 40,000. I actually like how these, well, I kind of like how these trim levels are broken out. I do think that some of the lower trim levels do come with a lot of nice equipment and a lot of nice safety features. And then some of these higher trim levels, you're not necessarily getting any safer of a vehicle. You're just getting some more comfort features. Um, with the SX Prestige being at 40000 even some of these SXs, there is going to be a little bit of crossover between the price of the Sorento and the price of the Telluride. So if you like all the features that come with the Telluride, but you just don't need the space, definitely check out some of these higher, levels, higher trim level Sorentos. But... I went through these trim levels. I do think the LX doesn't quite have all the safety features I'm looking for. So I do think the S is worth it, especially from a mom's perspective, to go up to the S because that's when you get the blind spot, you get the rear cross traffic, and just some of those more safety tech features. One thing that I found super frustrating, though, was that when you go to the EX, you lose the bench option. It only is available in captain's chairs. Um, the bench versus captain's debate is a pretty heated debate here on the Car Mom Crew. I prefer a bench, and I've talked about this a lot on my Instagram, but I'm going to leave an article in the description box by the car seat lady, and she talks about why she prefers a bench to a captain's. So that being said, I'm going to stick with my S trim level, and I am going to start building that one. Okay, so here are the different color options that they can come in. Um, I actually really like the black. Normally I'm a blue girl, but I didn't really like how this blue was with these body lines. I thought it was just like a little too much for me. I also thought the silver was really pretty, kind of had a blue hue to it, but I'm going to stick with the black, which is kind of rare for me. I'm going to stick with just the black Sensitec leather. So it's not real leather, but it's like a leatherette and I find it to be hold up just as well as real leather. And I don't, it's not quite as soft and comfortable, but it's fine. Show you a shot of the interior. So you can see I have the bench and then I have my other headrest in the back. So that would be my 2020, 2021 Kia Sorento, just keeping it pretty simple with the S trim level with the ebony black and the black Sensitec leather. Brings my total price to 33,660. Okay, that's gonna wrap up my Kia Sorento tour and I am really impressed by this car. The third row is so spacious. The captain's chairs are so nice. The technology is amazing. It's aesthetically pleasing. I really like it. If you are looking for a mid-size large SUV, if you don't want something quite as big as the Telluride, check this car out. Again, if the Toyota Highlander or the Honda Pilot is on your list, come look at this car as well. It is awesome. Make sure you um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below about which cars you want me to tour next. And as always, make sure you check out my Instagram at the Car Mom because I post a lot of great car-related content there, including a ton of car buying tips and tricks. Thanks.